We believe this is a very important report with a very urgent message for the Irish government. One of the purposes of today is to hold the government to account in terms of its promise to end direct provision and provide an appropriate and humane alternative. We've chosen this location here very deliberately. The workhouse is a direct link with Angurta Moor. It's a place of great sorrow and great suffering from the darkest period in our history. And it's a reminder of the way that we have institutionalised our vulnerable, marginalised and displaced people down through the ages. People in Ireland are very aware of the horrific suffering and injustice that this building represents and unfortunately that continues today through the system of direct provision. One of the most difficult things, one of the, the biggest things that really takes a toll on you while you're in this system is mental health. Even for someone like myself who has come out and gone past the experience of DP, trying to come back takes so much courage, so much strength, trying to regather yourself and find your identity. Because what the system essentially does to you when you arrive in Ireland is take away that identity, you know. Your name, who, who, the person that you're known as, is taken away and it's replaced by a number which is also known as your person ID number. So to the state going forward from that time, you are known by this person ID number. It takes away so much of your dignity because if you're taking away the autonomy of a grown individual to make decisions on how they live their day-to-day -day lives, it's horrendous to say the least. It's taking away the very essence that keeps someone alive. I always like to remind people that seeking asylum is not a crime. It's, it, it's a fundamental human right. All countries that are signatory to it, Ireland being one of them, have a duty to uphold that right and to protect that right. I was really disturbed when the Department of Justice announced that it would be resuming deportation orders. Now, obviously, this was received with a lot of panic and a lot of uncertainty for people that are in the direct provision system with looming deportation orders. There's nothing more stressful when you're going through the system than that fear of constantly having to think that you might be getting deported. Because while you're still in the system, you don't have the guarantee that you'll be able to stay in the country. You don't have that guarantee that at some point in time you'll receive your refugee status. The state doesn't seem to realize what that does to people. You know, once you see the brown envelope that has the logo, your heart is pounding because you don't know what it is. The uncertainty is there. You're not sure what, is, what, what they're going to say, you know. And you know, sometimes when they give you the positive results as well, mm. there's a way they communicate it to you. They start with the bad one first, <laughs> or rather the negative one, and move into oh, you've been granted to stay in Ireland. But you see, initially when you see that, I think they should always start with the positive news, you know, and they can now talk about, okay, the process. It's really scary. Who benefits from direct provision? And it's like the government don't benefit, and the people in it don't benefit. There's only one group of people who benefit from it, and it's private landlords. And of all of the private landlords that have benefited of it, it's a person from Carrick Cross who's benefited more than anyone else. There's a report done about a month or two ago about the most profit anybody has made from direct provision is a person, Seamus McEnany, who's from Carrick Cross too. So I think it's another thing about the location of being here too. I think it's important that they yeah, call things out like that as well. It might be worth recalling that when then Taoiseach Leo Varadkar, he said in the Doyle in October 2019, the sad reality is that the alternative to direct provision is camps and containers. And again on the 4th of June 2020, repeating the same government mantra that's been trotted out for 20 years, he said, direct provision ultimately is a service provided by the state and they are provided with free accommodation, food, heat, light, health care and education and also some spending money. This statement was made less than one year before the publication of the White Paper on the abolition of direct provision because it was reckoned to be not fit for purpose and it has never been.